How's it going everyone? My name is Bradley and welcome to a visual novel called Trick and Treat. Not trick or treat this time. Um, please excuse the stick I have attached to myself. It's my Halloween costume. A lazy stick figure, so shout out to Anthony Padilla on his channel for making a video about Halloween costumes for men. This was one of them, and I was too lazy to make an actual stick figure. So, when I saw this game on Steam, I saw the screenshots and I noticed there was a cat and a girl, so what better friend to help me join in this, on this visual novel than Hikari Angelica Nekomata. And if you don't mind, I hear myself in the background. Just had to mute Discord real quick before I begin again, so without further ado, let's start. The sound of our steps, combined with that of the occasional nocturnal animal, is the only thing we can hear. I didn't have anything planned for Halloween, so I saw this on Steam and I thought I might as well play it. It's terribly dark in this place. The dense vegetation makes it impossible to see the sky, the sky or light from the moon. I was going to say the skite for some reason. Our flashlights are the only things that light up our way. At times like this, one begs to not run out of battery. We walk without knowing what we are really looking for, or better said, for no reason. We are just a group of boys bored with our lives, trying to create a lasting memory on this night instead of just staying home doing nothing. Today is October 31st, All Hallows Eve, better known as Halloween. No, yes, probably should have recorded this on Halloween. Oh well. Three young men walk through a dark but up until now nothing special forest, me being one of them. We are doing it to prove our courage. It's too bad there isn't a girl here to see how brave we are. Seeing it like that, one could say this is a meaningless effort. For a moment, I stop to look at my watch. It's 1.49 a.m. That means we have been walking aimlessly for more than two hours now. I'm sure that many people would find a place like this terrifying. But once you get used to it, the fear disappears, making it feel like normal. What makes us afraid of the dark is that we cannot know what hides in it, what lurks in the shadows. But this is clearly an empty darkness. At that moment, I sigh for feeling how tired my legs are. What's the point of being here? Clearly we had already demonstrated what we wanted. It would be best to return. I should tell them. I was about to speak when suddenly the atmosphere in the forest becomes strange. Suddenly, a cold chill runs through my body. It was like any other chill except it was not going away. For no reason, the air temperature dropped from one second to the other. So much so, my breath becomes visible, turning into mist. It doesn't end there. The air is now filled with a rotten smell, just a little short from being unbearable. Images of worms and flies soon appear in my mind, giving me a really unpleasant feeling. We all stop at that moment. <laughs> Axel, <laughs> what's happening? I asked, confused, while we'll turning to look at my... Oh, the main character's name is Axel. Okay, cool. By the expression on their faces, it was, e just, it was easy to know that they were just as lost as I was. It was then that we heard footsteps nearby that did not come from any of us. We all got dead quiet after that. I don't know if I was out of fear or to check if it was not a mistake, but we stayed motionless, like statues, without making a noise. Just looking at each other's faces, wondering the same thing. What was happening? As as if I could know. We heard the steps again. They clearly belonged to a human, or at least a, to a large animal. But there was something strange about them. It sounds as if the person walked dragging one foot. Just thinking about it made me shiver. Damn! Why is this happening? It makes no sense. We should have returned home, but now it's too late to regret it. I had the feeling that we are being stalked by someone. The strange footsteps stop, but 
I'm still feeling the presence nearby. I do not know where it is, but I know that it's looking at me. That cursed thing is looking at me. My heart is beating anxiously. It's almost as if my body was telling me to get out of there. But strangely, my friends seemed unable to perceive it. It seems that it's gone. It must have been just an animal. Said one of them convinced that we were safe. I would like to believe that too. We had a sigh of relief. However, bad luck would soon strike us again. Unexpectedly, the forest becomes darker than before in just the blink of an eye. But that wasn't the fault of a fort of the forest, but of our flashlights, which went out. One of the three, only one, mine, was still working. What's going on? Did the batteries die? Asked one of them, scared, while they both beat themselves desperately, as if that was going to revive them. Oh wait, beating them desperately, the flashlights, not themselves. I can't blame them. The idea of walking in the, in the darkness was not pleasant for anyone. But after a few moments, we had no choice but to resign ourselves to that. One more the sound of our footsteps is heard. But the silence is different now. We are not quiet because we have nothing to say, but because we are afraid. We continue walking despite the fear that invades us. Visibility is almost zero, but we have no choice. In theory, we were walking back looking for the exit. I cannot remember anything of this forest. We could be walking in circles and I would never notice it until it is too late. I hate the thought of it. I just want to get out of here. Suddenly, my thoughts are silenced. We hear the footsteps of someone or something. Once more, the three of us become statues awaiting the presence to go. I hold my breath while feeling my heart beating anxiously. Damn, get away from here and leave us alone. Unexpectedly, the steps are heard closer. This time they do not disappear, but rather come at us. I can't stand it. I desperately move my flashlight everywhere, looking for the author of those footsteps, hoping for the light to reveal their identity and erase our fears. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Is that all there is around us here? Just empty air? My anxiety grows with each failed attempt. I refuse to believe that it was a ghost. Suddenly, when I move the flashlight again, I see a silhouette. I could not distinguish what it was for a moment. The light revealed something. Quickly, I point to the same place to, only to discover it was gone. I hold my breath anxiously. It was not an illusion. I am sure that I saw something. It was in that I hear something nearby, without even thinking that I aimed the light towards that place. What I found leaves us paralyzed of an expression of disbelief on our faces. It is a white cat with eyes of an intense red which stands before us. Her look is not the friendliest to say something. Somehow I get the feeling it's a female cat. Suddenly she lets it <coughs> Suddenly she lets out a thunderous meow that leaves us terrified. It sounded more like a lion roaring than a simple cat. The echo of her meow is heard throughout the forest, making it sound more sinister than it should be. It was then that suddenly an inexplicable force hits us three. I fall to the ground, and little by little, my eyelids closed. The fatigue becomes unbearable. I lose consciousness on the ground of the forest without knowing what's going to happen with me. Interlude before night falls. That was weird. Anyway, it is a day like any other, so normal that it was almost painful. The only special thing that could be said about it is that it's October 31st. 
If I were the memories when I was a kid and went out with my friends to ask for sweets from house to house. Just remembering it made me sigh. I feel nostalgic. Some things were better when I was a child. Or at least seems that like that. There were some who had good costumes, whether superheroes or monsters. <clears throat> my friends and I, on the other hand, had to use our imagination. Creativity was our costume, you could say, no matter how funny it could sound. I remember that my mother once painted red in my face. I remember that my mother once painted red in my face and told me, you will be the devil. I think that sentence is a little mixed up there. I think it should be my face red. Yeah. But it seems only she saw it that way when we went from home to home. It once said I was the tomato man. <laughs> Who's the tomato man? <laughs> but those things didn't matter to me since we always had a good time. The pass for candy now. Even if I had the best costume, I'm sure no one would give me anything. Except perhaps a scolding for acting like a child when I am 17 years old. But anyway, I can't stand the past. I must live in the present, no matter how little exciting that might be. Oh, it's very exciting. Excuse me. Back to reality, we are a group of friends who don't have any plans for today. We are still not old enough to go to a disco. That's ironic. And I doubt guys as us would have any luck in that environment. The other option would be to go to a party, meet girls, and have fun. Everything perfect, except that nobody has invited us. Not being popular has its disadvantages. Hey Axel, let's have a couple of matches. What do you say? My friend Steven called my attention while playing with the game console. Rushard. I believe that's what the game is called. A fast and quite complicated fighting game for me. I would normally agree to play with him. But for some reason, I don't feel in the mood today. I have no desire to play now. I replied with dis discouragement. I almost feel bad for doing it. Boring. The AI has no rival for me. Is no rival for me. Steven said with confidence. That you're playing on normal difficulty does not help your argument. I don't feel like losing, but if you want, you can challenge to Alfred. I said leaning the attention to my other friend. Um, I don't know how to play that. Answered Alfred doubting for a second. He is sitting behind the PC, but it seems that he isn't doing anything interesting. The only screen the screen only shows a lot of text. I think he's in Wikipedia. Hey, don't you have something more fun to do? I asked with discouragement without even thinking about what he was reading. Alfred looks at me surprised. The actual problem of society is that people are not interested in discovering their history. He is one of those sedue intellectuals always looking for any rare information to appear smarter than others. I'm sorry if I didn't say that right. Suedo. That's what I'm going to guess. Suda. Suda, thank you. When we forget our past mistakes, we are doomed to repeat them. He added later. What are you talking about? This village is small and its story is not interesting at all. Nothing outside of the lower was ever happened in it. Hmm, can I please stop yawning? Alfred laughs mockingly after hearing that. Your ignorance is worthy of praise. He pauses, filling his chest with pride. The very fact it is a small town is the reason it's full of mysteries. Did you know that 20 years ago, on this date, a man disappeared? So, what about it? I ask about being impressed or even interested in the least. Things like that happen all the time, in all places. As I thought, you don't know the history despite living in this very place. <sighs> I'm doing my best to stay awake, I promise. Alfred said while adjusting his glasses in, in an arrogant gesture. There is a legend behind the disappearance. That is what I was reading. After listening to him, I looked back at the computer screen with curiosity. It is then that I noticed that it was not Wikipedia, but some other page. Come on, 
read this and learn a little. Alfred said, inviting us to read what was on the screen. Both Stephen and I moved closer to read it. I'm just going to skim through this. Pause the video if you want to read this yourself. Should be a comma there. Roger Bacon Oswald Taylor If I had known that character more I'd, I wouldn't be questioning why he's the worst of all Witchwood or Wickwood, I'm guessing. Ah, okay. Story? I didn't know that such a story was hiding in this town. I said honestly surprised, even if it is a lie, it managed to hold my interest. Wait, there is something more. I would see at the same time as he scrolls to the comments. We read what is written there. A couple of comments call our attention. Both of them talk about some creature. <sighs> Whenever I read visual novels, I start to yawn a lot. Even if it seems like I'm interested. I really am. Uh, at the time they felt a horrible fear for what could happen to them. Well, the two comments share great similarities, but they could have been written by the same person. There are many others that deny it. Looks like people went to the force because the Legion couldn't find anything. I thought you could only read these things to look for more to look more cool before the girls," replied Stephen as a joke. Alfred giggles a little with shame. 
Partially, yes. He admitted it. That was a secret everybody silently knew. Well, well. Now we have an activity for tonight. <laughs> Steven said at the same time. He makes a face overflowing with enthusiasm. What? I asked completely lost. I thought we were just killing time. Simple. Let's go to that forest. Stephen replied without hesitation. He seemed really fascinated by the story. Are you insane? Said Alfred, unable to believe what he just heard. <laughs> <clears throat> you only need to look at his face to know he did not like the idea. Despite everything you've heard, you want to go? Of course, it would be a test of courage among us three. Replied Steve with full confidence. Mm. Perhaps a bit too much. He should relax for a bit. Don't tell me you're afraid. I... No. Why should I be afraid? Answered Alfred at the same time. He folds his arms making a false gesture of security. It's more than obvious that you're afraid, Alfred. Almost as much when you have to walk... When you have to talk with a girl. And what about you, Axel? Don't tell me you won't... Come? Suddenly Stephen asks me, at the same time looking at me mockingly. Don't tell me you want to be the chicken of the group. I hate that tone of voice he used. I will never give you that. I said without thinking, showing a confident smile and look. Well, let's not say no more. Take your coats, backpacks, flashlights and some food. We are going to the forest. Stephen said full of energy. Yeah! We three said in unison, as if we were going to have some kind of private party. Not really knowing what we were doing, or what we were going to find. 2.13 AM I awake completely confused, not knowing how much time had passed. My head hurts like hell, and I, but I can't blame it. Fortunately, the pain goes away just quickly just as my confusion. Soon, I came back to my senses. My flashlight is lying on the ground, shining towards the empty air. I immediately pick it up. It was my only protection against the darkness that surrounds me. Then I remember that Stephen and Alfred were with me. <sighs> Stephen! Alfred! Can you hear me? Without thinking, I scream their names in the dark while trying to find them with my flashlight, but there is no trace of them. They are gone. Where the hell are they? And what the heck just happened? <laughs> I really don't understand anything. Shit, we should have stayed at home. This is not a proof of courage. We could be in danger. I have to find them. 2.19 AM Little time has passed since I started to look for my friends, and I really can't stand this place. You've been looking for a minute. I'm going crazy in this forest. The darkness covers it as unnatural. It is a darkness that steals your own sanity, replacing it with an anxiety. To make it worse, the air is damp and cold as in winter, carrying a strong rot smell. as if there were corpses of animals hidden throughout the forest. <laughs> the atmosphere in this place is op oppressive. With every step you take, it makes you feel more uncomfortable. Since I started to look for my friends, I felt that something is watching me, but there is nothing. I sigh with my voice full of frustration. I just want to get out of here. I continue walking devoid of any hope. No matter where I look, or how much I walk, I find nothing. I cannot even hear the sounds of animals. Rather, it seems that they are already dead and rotting. <laughs> I'm sorry, Akari. It's alright. I really am interested. I don't know why my body is just acting up like this. No, I have to calm myself. I said to myself, I stopped for a moment to rest. I breathed deeply, but the raw air of this place does me no good. I immediately start to cough as if I had something stuck in the throat. Shit, shit, shit! 
What am I going to do? This cursed force seems endless. And even if by miracle I could escape, I could not abandon Stephen and Alfred. I'm really screwed up. Again, I sigh, feeling on the verge of tears. My frustration is building up, but I have to do my best to keep calm. If I fall into despair, then there is no doubt I will be joining the list of missing persons. In the end, I decide to keep walking. Step by step, I should get somewhere. At least I was convinced that staying in the same place would not do, any, would not do me any good. Even if it was only to deceive my feeling that I am doing something, I want to continue walking. Excuse me. Time passes without any changes. Only the sound of my footsteps can be heard, knowing that soon as you stop you will be surrounded by a dead silence. It is a good incentive to keep walking, but my legs are already hurting. Suddenly, I hear a crack at my feet. Instantly, I take a step back and look below to see what made that sound. What is this? I whispered to myself, surprised, discovering that I had stepped on an animal bone. I believe that's from an animal, although I do not rule out the possibility that it belongs to a person. But for my own good, I prefer not to think about that. An expression of anguish is drawn on my face. It is best to ignore it. I have to keep walking. Suddenly, my flashlight reveals something. Without hesitation, I point towards there again. Oh, okay. Only to realize with the surprise that it is the white cat. The one from before which made that awful meow, but this time I find it lying on the ground. It appears to be fainted and is wounded. Then what should I do? Pick her up. It is best to continue without waking her. The cat is dangerous. It is her fault that I ended up in this place and my friends are missing. But even knowing that, for some strange reason, reason, I can't help but feel sorry for her. Even if it is unnatural, it is still an animal. Then I bend down to see her closer. She is unconscious and there is a thin line of blood coming from her mouth. I'm a real idiot. I said to myself at the same time, I clean the blood from her mouth with a handkerchief that I had with me. Fortunately, she doesn't wake up. Then I close her mouth, making her appearance a little better. Now she, now she seemed to be peacefully sleeping. After a long sigh, I decide to pick her up carefully. I don't know what the powers of this cat are, but if she brought me here, maybe she can return me to my world. With her in my arms, I decide that the best thing I can do is continue walking. 2.31 a.m. Again, I find myself in a dark forest, wandering aimlessly, only moving forward, but it didn't seem I was getting somewhere. In my arms, I carry the cat, which sleeps soundly. Come here. Here you'll be safe. I suddenly stop. It was probably easy to see the disbelief on my face at that moment. It's that voice again. I whisper to myself with no one to listen to me. Shortly after I found the cat, a mysterious voice appeared in my mind. It is a feminine voice, soft and gentle, as if it belonged to a princess from a fairy tale, but I can't trust it. <laughs> I was right to have you voice this then. Am I really going crazy? Or is it this force that doesn't make any sense? I don't know, but I don't like any of the two options. Then I feel the cat move in my arms. I look down at her, confused, just to see how she opens her red eyes suddenly. I become quiet at that instant. For a moment, the two stay motionless, staring into the eyes of the other. The red eyes of the cat are disturbing to me, but also there is something fascinating about them, something that attracts me. I lose myself in her eyes as if hypnotized until suddenly she jumps with the intention of scratching my face. My reflexes 
is pushing her at the same time I jump back, turning my head to dodge her claws. I managed to dodge her attack, but in the process, I dropped my flashlight. I panicked and acted clumsily. <laughs> the flashlight falls near me, lightening up a tree in the vicinity. As soon as it is licked in my hands, I remember how dense this abnormal darkness is. I quickly pick it up, not even thinking before taking action. Then I light the place where the cat was, only to discover she had arced her body angrily as if she feared an attack from me. Those red eyes stare at me, shining with the light of the flashlight as if they were jewels, reflecting a fearsome hatred and rejection towards me. My body freezes after seeing them. I can't even think. Then the cat lets out a thunderous meow. <laughs> Similar to the one before, but weaker. Although not any less frightening. There is no doubt there is something wrong with the animal. It must be cursed. Everything is her fault. She must be some kind of evil spirit. A pet of the witches. I feel how panic seizes me. My heart beats quickly, begging me to do something. My mouth is dry and forehead covered with cold sweat. What should I do? I'm going to confront the cat. No, I should not despair. I have to calm down and think carefully about what I should do. With that in mind, I take a deep breath and look again at her. Soon the expression in my eyes changes from fear to courage. I realize that it is only a cat without doubt a strange one, but my life, my life is not actually in danger. That isn't a tiger in me staring at me, but a simple cat. Apparently only her power those weird meows and scratching. If she could kill me, she would have already done it. So I rule out that possibility. Her work must be transporting the next victim to this area of the forest, so unnatural and shady. After filling my lungs of air, <coughs> after filling my lungs of air, I slowly walk towards the cat. Her meows get louder with every step, but I don't let them scare me. Seeing that I do not turn back, she shyly takes a step back. In my mind, I smile at that image. The prey is now the hunter. Meow. I look at her directly while advancing. Little by little, her meows become weaker, as if she was losing strength. Then I suddenly jump and take her in my hands. She hardly resists at all. Not so tough now, right? You look better like this. Good kitty. She is trembling in my hands. She looks so helpless that I almost feel like a villain. But I must not forget that I must not forget all that she has done so far. It's her fault that I'm in this place. She brought me here. Then if I kill her, would it be possible to go back? For a moment that grim idea crossed my mind. I never killed an animal. The tr truth is that I can't be proud of myself in doing such a thing. But if I do, maybe the sledging could end here and now. And what should I do? <sighs> I can't be a hundred percent sure that this cat is the curse. Most animals have red eyes. No way, I'm not killing her. It's only logical the magic should die along with the cat. That should be my ticket back. If I kill, kill her, everything will be over tonight and the legend will come to an end. Confident that it was for the best, I try to view it in my mind. But no matter how hard I force myself to see it, in the end I am able to take the life of another living being. Even if it is a cursed cat serving a witch, I don't feel good killing her. I think I'm too nice for my own good. 
so the only thing that remains is to keep her with me, hoping that sooner or later she allows me to escape. With nothing more to think about, I decide, I decide the best thing is to do is to continue my path. 2.41 a.m. It has been a few minutes since I captured the cat. Again, I find myself walking with her in my arms, led by the strange voice. How long have I been walking in this forest? Apparently enough, not enough to make me go mad, but should be close. Don't be afraid. Come with me. I will help you. The voice sounds closer this time. It seems I'm going in the right direction. I do not fully trust in this voice, but it's the best I have. At least at first glance, it seems like a friendly voice. I'm completely focused on my way when I suddenly feel something bite me. Ah! What the heck? I shout in pain, realizing that the cat bit my arm. Fortunately, it wasn't a dangerous bite, but it sure was painful. With my distraction, she takes the chance to jump from my arms, falling a few steps away from me. I quickly set my gaze upon her, furious, but soon something happens to make me f that makes me forget about my anger. Suddenly, the cat is covered with a bright light, so much that it repels the unnatural darkness surrounding the forest, stealing my breath. Under the light, its figure gradually changes until it ceases to be a cat and becomes a human figure. No longer is there a cat in front of me, but a girl with incredible beauty. I must really be going crazy. <laughs> she has white hair and red eyes, just like the cat. She seems about my age. In other circumstances, I would have asked her out without hesitation. <laughs> oh god, you must be desperate. Just thinking about it makes me laugh to myself. <laughs> I know this is sudden, you just transfor transformed from a cat into a human, but will you go out with me? <laughs> Even at the edge of madness, it seems some things about me will never change. She approaches, me sl she approaches slowly towards me, one step at a time, with no fear. The girl then stares into my eyes, with a slightly irritated face. Her lips are moving. She seems to be saying something, but I am unable to hear a sound. Are you trying to tell me something? I babbled, still confused, with a face of disbelief which surely made me look stupid. Said the girl over. <laughs> oh, this is funny now. Said the girl with a very low voice. I do not understand what she is saying. What? I can't hear you well. I asked, still confused. Suddenly, the girl pouts in a bad mood. What's wrong with you? Are you deaf? Finally, I could hear her clearly. <laughs> and just in time, because it seems her patience was about to end. Okay, okay, now I heard you. I said, annoyed. All my astonishment from just a few seconds ago disappears when I see the arrogant attitude of the girl. At least now I don't think she will bite me. I hope. The girl then snorts with irritation. What an annoying guy I had to find. She said at the time she places a hand on her lips, making a pensive face, but her hand is on her arm. Wait, you shouldn't speak ill of some when you are the right before you. I was quick to respond. For a moment I feel annoyed at the thought that I have to teach manners to this spirit, or whatever she is. A pity is so much beauty wasted on someone so arrogant. The girl then let out a snort of annoyance after hearing me. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a bad habit that I can't quit. She answered without sounding very repentant, clearly a false apology. After talking, she diverts her gaze towards the surroundings as if she was bored. I see. I replied, annoyed. 
I just met her, and I already feel like I don't like her, even though I was attracted to her a few seconds ago. But anyway, that doesn't matter. I must not forget who this girl is. She was the cat that started it all. Anyway, at least could you tell me why you attacked me and my friends? I asked shortly after acting more seriously. The greetings were over. It's time to get to the important stuff. And why did you bite me if I wasn't doing anything? I saved your ass. Before I knew it, my lips were moving, asking another question. I cannot lie. I was angry. Then the girl stares at my face. She blinks with curiosity before speaking. Does it hurt? The wound? She asked innocently. Yes. I was quick to respond with annoyance. I didn't need to say more. Of course it hurts me, silly cat. She looks at me in silence for a few seconds, until suddenly she approaches me without any shyness or fear. On second thought, how could a simple human such as me scare a cat that can turn into a person? Show me your wound, said the girl once she stood right next to me. Her presence makes me nervous. This girl seemed to not know what a personal space is. As embarrassing as it sounds, I never heard a girl this close. If only it wasn't in this forest. I don't know why I shouldn't trust her, but strangely, something tells me that she has no bad intentions. The girl is surrounded by a calm aura, something pure unlike anything else in the forest. In the end, resigning with a sigh, I show her my arm with the bite. Immediately, the girl sets sight on her, sits her sight on my wound. If I only take a moment," she said with complete confidence. Then she looks up into my wait. Then she looks up into my eyes. Up. Could you close your eyes? She asked as she blushes slightly. I'm surprised that to see the embarrassed face she has, even if it's just a little. Then I sigh. Something wasn't right, but there is something else I can do. Why do I get the feeling she's gonna kiss me? Okay. I see it doing as she asked. I didn't know what to expect. For a moment, it. Uh, <laughs> I love this game already. <laughs> what kind of magic can work when only when you have no clothes? I don't know, but my mind sure wanted to on that. <laughs> Keep your compost. <laughs> Something I've. Something I feel something wet and warm touch my wound. Immediately I shudder. Wait, what are you doing? It's a stupid question because I knew well what she was doing. She was licking my wound. I guess she's still part cat. <laughs> you idiot! Who said you could watch? She was qu was quick to respond, the cat. Whoever wrote these dialogues needs to work on their grammar. With her cheeks red in embarrassment and her lips still close to my wound, she looks adorably troubled. Don't you see that I'm just trying to heal you? She then added in a bad mood. I... sorry. I said blushing. I thought you would do something more extra extraordinary. Now I'm not sure. Is she a girl who can transform into a cat, or a cat that can become a girl, or a girl that's part cat? Sorry to disappoint you not being extraordinary enough. Murmured the girl at the time she gives me an annoyed look, red eyes shining with disgust. It is then that I realize that the pain has disappeared. With curiosity, I look where the, the wound was, only to discover now that there is no trace of it. 
for a couple of seconds I stay silent, incredulous. It seems that your treatment worked. I finally see Grateful still looking at the spot. But of course, I have experience healing myself. Answered the girl, closing her eyes, inflating her chest to show her pride. I actually appreciate what she did, but I still want to she really had to lick it to cure me. I understand, but who are you? The girl makes a small snort of curiosity after hearing my question. Then she tilts her head and closes her eyes, making a thoughtful face. It seems I have not presented myself. She opens her eyes and gazes into mine. My name is Ashley. So that's her name. I expected something more extra, extra vegan. My name is Axel. My name is Axel. Got it memorized. By the way, have you ever been accused of witchcraft? Before I knew it, I asked that question. I guess it was rather rude for me, completely lacking in manners. But I must not forget for a, even a second that I am in this cursed forest. Ashley suddenly becomes silent. At plain sight, it was obvious she didn't take a well. She takes her time before responding. Yes, but that was a long time ago. Then she closes her eyes and exhales, emptying her lungs. She seemed to be recalling something painful. Just seeing her made me feel guilty. I'm sorry. It was not my intention to make you remember it. I said slightly remorseful. No doubt to be accused of witchcraft must have been a horrible experience. Ashley closes her eyes and nods a couple of times. It's okay. It's not like I can blame your curiosity seeing where we are. Then she looks at me closely with curious eyes. By the way, how do you know about me? Perhaps you are a sorcerer who has lived during these past centuries? She asked, narrowing her eyes as if she was trying to see the inside of my mind. What kind of question is that? No, nothing like that, I answered at the moment. I'm just an ordinary person. I admit boring, but she didn't need to know that. It's just there are stories about witches in this forest, but as you can see, the stories are not very convincing or else I wouldn't be here. I explained, trying to remove any doubt Ashley may have. Again, she closes her eyes and nods. I understand. She pauses and looks me in the eyes. It's because of the stupid myths that stupid humans come to this forest, just like you. She then said, looking at me with rejection. Wait, what are you trying to say? We are to blame? I f replied, feeling offended. Ashley suddenly looks at me disgusted. Are you an idiot? Yes, if you hadn't come, my existence would be nice and peaceful, instead of this chaos that it is every year. She said, ending with a sigh of frustration. But you're the one who causes all this. I was quick to respond. I don't even bother to hide my anger. I can't believe what she says. How arrogant can she be? Ashley opens her eyes wide surprised. Then she looks at me with annoyance in her red eyes. Do you not understand, stupid human? Definitely, I do not like this girl. I'm trying to protect you. Her words take me by surprise. Huh? I exclaimed incredulously. You attack me and my friends only to protect us? Yes. She simply replied. At the same time, she nods filled with pride and confidence. Okay, that's it. I'm getting out of here. I cannot believe how arrogant and self-centered this girl is. I'm also going to end this episode here, but we've because we've been going on for almost an hour. It's getting close to that time. As interesting as this novel is and hilarious it is, is I don't have all day, unfortunately. So, I'm gonna save here. 
And that's going to be it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This has turned out to be very interesting and very hilarious so far. Thank you, Hikari, for joining me. You're welcome. And shout out to Anthony Padilla on his channel for the idea of the lazy stick figure costume that I'm wearing right now. What you need is a stick from the outside world and some sellotape. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like. Subscribe to my awesome channel. I'll put in the end card the video link to where I found the costume idea of the lazy stick figure. And I will. we will see you guys next time. Later, everyone. Meow, meow.